All right, before we get started here, we're going to go to settings and key bindings. We're going to look up unselected. In another view, you will see show unselected pro boxes. Now, uh, the shortcut will be blank by default. I've already got mine set, so you want to set this to any key bind that you want. Or instead of a key bind, you can just edit toolbars and drag this to anywhere you want. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it as my key bind. Okay, now that we have that set, we can drag in our reflection probe from the entity browser. Like so. Okay, so I've made some interesting geo of which we're going to probe. All right, to start out, I'm going to start with probing this room. So I'm going to go inside the prober box and just control click the faces of the room I want. Um, if your control click isn't working, you may have advanced patch editing options open. And this will conflict with anything that uses control alt, control alt, alt key binds. So make sure that's closed. Now, I haven't put a roof on this, but we'll just pretend there is a roof. It's fun. Now, you might be thinking, but it overlaps into this room. Yes, it does. So that's fine because subtraction probes exist. To move the probe itself, the center point, hold control and shift and drag in the 2D view or in the 3D view with the handles. But for the 2D view, your mouse has to be within the box to move the probe because if it's outside the box, you will drag the fall off. So that's how you do that. So this is our main corridor probe. And then we're going to copy and paste one into this room. And now this is not a box. So what we can do is in the entity info is simply untick the box. Now you need to control click all your faces and I don't have a fucking ceiling. So that's going to go all the way up to the fucking skybox. But uh, we'll drag it down. Right. Now we've got our probe, but it's overlapping with this one. So what we can do is we can make a subtraction probe. To do that, copy and paste the probe. Now while holding control and shift, we're gonna drag our probe down with the axis here. And now the reason why we do this is because you cannot have the probe center core thingamajig inside of each other. It will not allow it. So you just have to drag it down a little bit or to the side, it doesn't matter really. I'm gonna tick subtract. Now this will subtract from whatever it's targeted to. So we want to subtract this area of space from this probe. What I did just there was select the subtraction probe first and then the probe I want to subtract it from and then hit W, which automatically set up the targeting. Now this probe will no longer cover the subtracted space, allowing this probe to be here. And we're just going to do the exact same thing for this little box over here. All right, so we went over how to subtract space from a probe. Now we're going to go over the better way on how to actually use this piece of geo here. Instead of subtracting, we're going to use overrides this time. So overrides are much more simpler. So selecting your probe that you want to override with, you tick the override KVP and this will override whatever probe doesn't have this selected. So doing this to both of our probes here, making sure this one doesn't have override ticked. That will now override whatever probe doesn't have it ticked. It does the same thing as subtracting, but much simpler and quicker. Okay, moving to an outdoor area. I'm going to drag in my probe into this little alleyway shit I've created here and snap the faces accordingly. Now, I'm not going to probe up here simply because of the fact it already lines up with the pre-existing vista and the reflection data of the global probe, which is our sun volume, because the sun volume acts as a global probe. So since there's mountains here already, it makes sense for the global probe to be up here. However, if there was buildings here all around it and it was casting this reflection, it wouldn't really make much sense that in that case, I would probe up here. But for tutorial's sake, I will cover that too. Alrighty, this is where we can use our keybind that we created earlier. So clicking Control alt shift n or whatever you made your keybind to, we can see other probes. And this actually lets us snap our probe to the face of another probe. And that will help us blend this little section here. Now I'm not gonna do it like this though, blend into the room, otherwise we'd have this data bleeding into the wall here, which we don't want. So we're going to go roughly about halfway here, or better yet, actually here, and then blend inwards from there. And then grabbing this probe, I'm going to use the 2D view only because with non-box probes, it bugs out like crazy if you try snapping to another probe. So if it's a non-box like this one, do not try and snap it to another probe, otherwise you get some weird shit. So like before, it was to here, and we could just leave it at that. All right, now these are lined up. You cannot have the inner box overlap each other. So we have the inner box here, 
than the outer box. This is our outer box. And this is the fall off or fade, which allows blending between probes. All right, so I'm gonna fill out the area here, just to the, uh, roughly to the edge. The good enough fall off, that'll work. Depending on the level of change in the lighting, you may or may not wanna make the fall off bigger or shorter. Now this is actually pretty harsh from directly sun facing to dark. So I'm gonna make this a little drastic here. Okay, now this is the real instance you'd use the snapping to other probes with the unselected keybind running. Cause I can just do that real quick. Now I'm gonna make this a, what I like to call a corner piece. So instead of a hallway, if you will, it's gonna be in the corner, which allows me to go deep into here and blend. You know, I might actually adjust this. I might have this go like this and uh, this go like that. It'll work far better in my opinion. And then copy and paste here, snap to that. And uh, yeah. For going outdoors to indoors, we're probably just gonna use the 2D view the entire time because you wanna be pretty fucking precise with the way you do that just due to the nature of the uh, geo. Whereas outside is pretty fucking simple. As you can see, we got our quite a bit of probes here. I'm gonna build lighting so we can see what this looks like. Okay, let me hide all that. Now, we have a lit alleyway. And as you can see where there is no more probe, it looks pretty fucking ugly. But this, so it's pretty decent. And the blend between, pretty pretty damn good. Now this isn't because we didn't adjust the uh, inner probe here. That's fun. All right, here I'm filling out the rest of the space with probes using the methods we just went over. Plopped in some buildings just to use as an example for the geo. As you can see, I'm using quite a fucking few probes here, which is a good thing by the way. Right, now with that done and the lighting baked, we can see it looks far, far better already. Okay, we essentially went over all the geo aspects of probes. So now we can dive into the entity settings. All right, so first section under diffuse, we have ambient occlusion. Okay, so power is the strength of your darkening of shadows or softening, however you wanna terminize it. Range is how far from the corner they go in. So from here to 16, if we change it to two, and then up this to eight, as you can see, they only go up so far, but if we change the range to 16, they extend further. I typically always keep that on eight. I do love bumping up the power though. I love that. Strength double-sided is for double-faced things, which means a material that is backlit or trees or foliage typically. I, I I'll just leave this on point two, honestly. Uh, box, you already know what that is. Brightness adjust changes the base brightness. If you have an area that's really dark, but you don't want it to be dark, or you have an area that's bright and you want it to be really dark, I'd adjust this for that, but you really shouldn't, otherwise you get really whack looking. You wanna fuck off windows, get really whack looking lighting for going upwards above the value, but going down is very helpful, especially for fucking like a really dark area that you want to be hidden from the player, perhaps. So I recommend only going down and up a tiny bit for this. If you come, don't even change it. This messes with the exposure, which can give you really splotchy looking light bounces. So I wouldn't adjust that at all. Uh, leave included rays and override. We already know what that does. All right, resolution. This is where we go over probe density. All right, so what we can do once again is open the key bindings and look for probe density. Under all these fucking tabs, you'll see show probe density. I just have this as a toolbar. So clicking probe density, we can see the fucking density. So you typically want to aim for 4x here. Anything less or more, you can adjust the resolution to hit that value. So green is low. So this is pretty low because it's a massive probe. So we can actually up this to let's say six and that should uh, give us a better density for that. Uh, this is quite dense. So we can lower this down to three, but it's not like too bad. Same with this one. And you basically get the gist. Uh, this big probe up here, which I can't seem to actually find. Oh, there it is up this all the way up to eight. And you just want to adjust the base stuff for that really. And that's resolution. All right, next we have smooth post process, which from what I've seen visually makes no fucking difference. But if it does, it's very subtle that I can't even see it. So we're just gonna skip that. Subtract, we know what that does. Now virtual, this is juicy as fuck. So virtual probes are probes that bake into other probes, but not the area itself. 
So for instance, over here, if I had, if I had really yellow lighting over here and I had this a virtual probe, this area, and it was neighboring with this probe, it'll help this probe grab data from this one. But because it's a virtual, it actually wouldn't bake. It will still look like this over here, but it will contribute to the lighting over here. So that's virtual probes. You now I know what a virtual probe is and volumetric. Volumetric is good for sun rays beaming in through windows. So if we had really, really volumetric lighting coming through, instead of the light hitting the surface and then bouncing around in the room, having volumetric will allow the ray itself to be bounced and casted into the lighting of the room. Down here, we can essentially ignore all this apart from these ones here. So in place space, I'll detail. If you have probes in Vista area, you could just tickle that and untick those. All right, the last section for probes is uh, reflection planes. Now you can set these by Alt, right clicking faces in your 3D view. Now you may or may not need these, it depends. If you're having incorrect reflections casted off the wrong walls, then you can set this. If not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's everything basic with probes. I like I went over in part one of the series, if you go back to your sun volumes SSIs in Ape. So here we can adjust the bounce count. This affects how many times your probe will bounce a light. When adjusting any of these values, make sure you have them the same as your SSI and your override. The only one that can be different is the color and stops. Now I'll set it to five in part one. I'm gonna set it to a bunch of different values and I'll show you comparisons. All right, here's bounce count of one. You should never set it below four. Right, so this is four. This is the minimum you should set it to. And the max, I recommend not going above six. All right, so that wraps it up for this part of the lighting tutorial series. I'm not going to cover global elimination in this part. I may or may not in the future because that's a whole other thing. But if it helped and you enjoyed it, hit like, subscribe, all that shit. See you cunts next time.